Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to the Lord's Day of Worship here at Amp Hill Presbyterian Church. Or I'm just not leaning into it. No, it's not. Turn off. I bet you the battery just died. That might be it. Yeah, it's the microphone. What kind of battery? I don't know. Maybe recharge. Where do you go um, double A, two double A, oh, but now it works. Just need a finagling. I'll tell you what, we'll be ready. Well, this is a, uh, a bittersweet day, a day of transition marking my last Sunday in the pulpit here at Amp Hill. Um, it's been a beautiful, beautiful uh, relationship, almost six years. And uh, so th there may be moments where I speak a little bit slower, just kind of stand and pause and, and soak in your faces, your presence, um, get lost and thought about just what this place and this ministry um, has done to serve me uh, as a pastor but but yes gratitude abounds and and i am grateful for the god that saw it fit to cross our paths and and lead us side by side for this um, beautiful bit of time we're gonna have a um a little kind of bag lunch picnic afterwards if you weren't aware of that but we've got plenty of food and and drinks um, and we'll just kind of gather out here and I, and I hope um, as many of you as are able can stick around so I can get a chance to, to thank you in person and, and just, and just um, soak in your wonderfulness one last time. So please do plan on sticking around and sharing fellowship with us after worship. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be? Lifted this morning. All right. In case those of you at home didn't hear, that's a Presbyterian's women's meeting after worship next Sunday. Bring your own lunch. Don't bring your. You got. You got. It. Okay. We're good. Don't bring your own lunch. Bring yourself. Well, in the spirit of of gratitude. Um, and considering the God that, that we worship, let us prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to joyfully worship God together this morning. just me or did this gray morning just get a bit more beautiful thank you let us call ourselves to worship using words inspired by the 138th psalm i invite you to rise whether in body or in spirit be grateful for the lord is good god's love for us is never ending be grateful for the earth, 
and sea and sky. God's love for us is never ending. Be grateful for God's faithfulness. God's love for us is never ending. Be grateful for every sunrise and every sunset, for every seed planted and every fruit harvested, for every step you take and for every pilgrim with whom you journey. God's love for us is never ending. Our opening hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. You'll find the lyrics on the insert in your bulletin. If it seems difficult to be honest with yourself about who you are, about what you've done, about what you feel called to do, take a second to contemplate the magnitude of God's love for you, the, the grace bestowed on you through that love. If you're worried about what it might mean to your future to be honest about where you are now, the gift of grace is that it takes the pen that writes the story of our lives from the worst we've ever done and places it in the hands of love. Grace makes it so much easier for us to confess, and therefore that is the foundation of our invitation to pray and to lift our voices, confessing our sins before God and one another, trusting in God's gracious mercy. 
So let us pray. Merciful one, you know when we are afraid to love. You know when we are too cowardly to show mercy. Remind us again that perfect love casts out such fears. Surround us and strengthen us with your perfect love, even in the face of our imperfections. Imbue us with a love so strong, with such growth toward perfection, that we may cast aside our pride and embrace the power of love. Christ is the vine. We are simply the branches. And if we abide in Christ, Christ's words will abide in us. Ask for whatever you wish in Christ's name, and it will be granted. In the name of Christ, you who seek forgiveness are forgiven. In the name of Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Please be seated. And Marie Hart has our hunger offering. Volunteered at the last minute. Thank you. Uh, this will be short. I just wanted to speak a little bit about being aware and setting priorities. Um, I think week before last, in reading the paper, which some of us still do. Um, there's this tiny little article, maybe you can see it. It was so small that I actually misplaced it and then found that I had taped it in front of my Sunday school book. Uh, it talks about that two UN agencies warned Tuesday that over 27 million people in Congo are suffering from acute hunger, a record high representing almost one third of the nation's estimated population of 87 million. And of those facing acute hunger, nearly 7 million people are at the emergency level. And it just, I read that tiny little article that was on one of those side pieces in the paper, and probably next to it was a huge article about Harry and Meghan or something like that. And I thought, where are our priorities and why aren't we hearing more about this? Um, and just to be made aware of it. Um, the population of the Tri-Cities area is just a little over a million. So to put that in perspective, 27 times that are in danger of uh, needing emergency food supplies. I know that we are aware because we are reminded of it every month, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention and uh, maybe have you think about what's the priority in your life and uh, make other people aware of the need and um, do something about it. We try to do that every month. We think maybe this is not a whole lot for 27 million people, but if 27 million people did this, it would help allevi alleviate that problem. I'm going to um, steal Aaron's thunder a little bit and uh, uh, quote 1 John 3, 16 through 18, which is part of our scripture for today. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for others. If anyone has material possessions and sees someone in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words alone, but with actions and in truth. Um, the hunger money jar is on the table uh, as you leave or whenever you feel that you can contribute. Let's pray. God, we thank you for making us aware of the need and for giving us the ability to do something about that. Um, help us to set priorities that honor you and show our love for you and each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ree. You can steal the thunder of proclaiming the gospel anytime. 
Let us pray as we prepare to go into God's word and have God's word go into us. Holy Spirit, flow through us like this wind, making space in our heart and in our minds for the word of God that is planted like a seed that is shines upon us like beams of sunlight that illumines God's presence and God's calling in our life, open to us a new way of living, grounded in your purposes, that the glory of our lives might illumine you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So two passages from John this morning, different different authors, same school of thought, I believe. The Gospel of John and then the first letter of John, starting with the Gospel, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And when the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. I give up my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen, and I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I received this commandment from my Father. And the first letter of John continues in this vein, saying this is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. But if Someone has material possessions and sees a brother and sister in need, but refuses to help. How can the love of God dwell in a person like that? So little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. This is how. uh This is how we will know that we belong to the truth. The truth will reassure our hearts in God's presence. Even if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. So dear friends, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence in relationship to God. We receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love each other as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments dwell in God, and God dwells in them. This is how we know that he dwells in us, because of the spirit he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. God. You working again? Let's see here. Let's give this one last jiggle. I think Amy went to go get other mic battery. We'll see if this losing it. Ah, she turned on another microphone. That's what we're hearing. I think this one's working. 
turn that one up a bit. Is that too loud? No, just right? Thank you. The shout at you guys in my last sermon. <laughs> Dictionary.com defines abiding as continuing without change, enduring, or steadfast. And I really should have listened to my high school speech teacher who said you should never open a speech by quoting from the dictionary because that, that, that's not quite what I think of when I think of abiding. That's not the definition that I, that I want to use. All right. When I read through these scripture passages from the Gospel of John and the, the first letter of John, a different type of abiding pops into my head, a different definition. See, the, the Bible defines abiding as the essence of true love. Right? God's love for us, which the psalmist praises as steadfast and never ending. It's the love by which Jesus laid down his own life for the sake of ours. This is a love that abides beyond what seems like the obvious end. When I wrote the title of this sermon, I was actually thinking about the passage that comes a little bit later in 1 John from the fourth chapter, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Right? When I think of abiding, I think of love. I think of the essence of God in whose image we are created. I think of the promise of forgiveness and the gift of grace. I think of God faithfully holding me together in my brokenness, keeping me from the shambles of sin toward which I too often tend to tumble. Abiding for me carries implications of this relationship between God and us. Between perfect love and the kind of love that is too easily lured by lies about forbidden fruit. When I hear the word abiding, I, I don't think of utopia, but of the tension between God's vision for this world and this world's interest in other things. When I think about what it means to abide in love, I think about a God whose commands have been disobeyed time and again, yet who persists not to punish us, but to help us heal and learn and to call us forth, trusting the best of which we are capable. When I think of God abiding in us, I think about a God who knows heartbreak and pain and loss and grief. I, I don't think about a stoic, emotionless statue of a God, but of a God whose love perseveres amidst the grief of worldly woes. And consider how many woes God has witnessed. Death, and violence, and war, and destruction, and sickness, and turmoil, and injustice, intolerance, manipulation. If abiding means continuing without change, enduring, or steadfast. Do not these things, these woes of the worldly way, seem to abide sometimes all the more than love? Does not violence seem to persevere more than peace? Does sickness not seem to surround us more than health? Does injustice not seem insurmountable by justice? The ways of the world seem to abandon us to harm and hatred and inhumanity like a hired hand running away from the flock when the wolves of woe advance upon the world. Yet God's love 
abides, we're told, even when the world is at its worst. God's love abides beyond cross and grave and even hell. God's love has prevailed against impossible odds and continues to call us to live the type of life that celebrates the victory of love despite the way the world seems to be. Sin has lost and God's love has won. Sin just refuses to concede the victory. And it's always been this way. Every Bible story involves the intervention of sin into humanity's attempt to abide in love. But God's love for us abides. Our love for God and one another, human love for God and other humans. Well, let's just say that's why the ways of this world continue to lead to so much woe. It's also why there is so much beauty. We're not only capable of sin, we're capable of love. And when that love shines through, take note, take heart, abide in those moments and let them strengthen you. Because God's abiding love for us keeps offering new beginnings and the persistent invitation, come, abide in love. And that's grace in a nutshell. The persistent calling to abandon the worst of this world, the worst that has been done to us, the worst that we have done to others, to abandon the story in which our future is written by the worst we've ever done and to abide instead in love. So to be in this world, but not of this world, as Jesus describes it, is to be aware of this constant struggle between sin and love. That between that which desperately wants to abide and the only thing that will abide. God's love in the fullness of time will be all that is left and those who are wrapped up in it to be in this world but not of this world to be of God's love in this world some of the biggest and most important questions of faith confront us in the midst of this very struggle between God's love and this world. Do you really believe in the power of love to abide all things? Will you trust in love against the temptations of power and wealth and selfishness? Will you allow love to abide in your thoughts and words and deeds? Will your life reflect the victory of love or the desperation of sin? Well, if the sense of gratitude that I feel and having the opportunity to serve you, to witness the way you do ministry, the way you love one another, the way you call yourselves to awareness, as Re reminded us in the hunger offering of where this world is in need of more love, the way that you pray for one another, serve one another, feed one another, is any indication of the answers that your lives pose to these questions, not in words and in speech, but in action and in truth. And there is a resounding yes to the abiding presence of God's love here at Amp Hill Presbyterian.
church. I feel like that big question that comes out of the challenge between God's love and the ways of this world comes when we look at the cross and ask ourselves, do we believe that the cross was the end of God's story or yet another new beginning? To abide in love is to trust that what might seem like the ending of a story, in fact, by God's grace, is a new beginning. Today is an ending of sorts. But I pray that God's grace will help us to persevere through the very real grief that accompanies this loss of relationship and friendship and mutual service. Now, it might seem unusual for me to admit that I give thanks to God for the grief I feel as I say goodbye to the congregation who has loved and supported and encouraged me for nearly six years of my fledgling pastoral career. Now, I'm not grateful for the pain. I'm not grateful for the loss. I'm not happy to leave. But I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to build relationships so beautiful and so valuable that it hurts to lose them. If one wishes to avoid grief, one must abandon love. If one abides in love, there will be grief. As the superhero vision puts it in the recently released Wanda vision, I've always been alone. It's all I've ever known. I've never had to experience loss because I've never had a loved one to lose. But what is grief if not love persevering? Beloved, may you abide in love, and may love abide in you. God's blessing be upon you as you face a new beginning. And may God's persistent and abiding love remain in your abiding and faithful ministry. And may I leave you with a portion of what you have given me. Deep Gratitude for the abiding love of God that has surrounded and sustained us in this beautiful and cherished time we've had together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and our responsive hymn, All the Way My Shepherd Leads Me. You rise as we sing together. <laughs> continue in unison, reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed and the faith in which we abide, the faith that binds us together in all times and all places. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. Let us pray. With grateful hearts, we reflect upon the many gifts and blessings that fill our lives because of your love for us, O oh God. Make us mindful, make us aware of these blessings, of these 
gifts and of the ways that you call us to use them. Help us to see your movement as it has been in our midst all along, shaping us, guiding us, leading us like a shepherd to those pastures where we can feed the lost sheep and welcome them into the fold, to those places where we can find the water that nourishes our souls. In gratitude for our gifts, we live our lives in pursuit of the calling that Jesus tells us it is possible for us to achieve, that Jesus has shown us a life that is possible to live. May his compassion the way that he laid his life down for others, inspire us. Take the financial gifts we, we lay down and use them to support and continue the many ministries. Take our hands and our feet and strengthen them to continue to walk in his footsteps and serve by his side. Call us each in our own journey in this world has to find those leaders and those friends with whom to travel and fill us with hope and courage to do your will. When our paths diverge, Remind us that you are always with us and always guiding us and always leading us. And that that presence, your abiding presence, your abiding love with us is all we need to believe in in order to make our lives an offering to you. May we continue to do so with joy. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn your attention to the page of joys and concerns printed in our bulletin. Tomorrow we celebrate Journey Anderson's birthday. And then on Wednesday, the anniversary of Peter and Megan. And we continue to hold them in prayer as they anticipate the coming of their first child. As always, continue to pray for our session, particularly hold them in prayer as they think about continuing the, the next relationship that you will have with, with church leadership. So pray for them as they continue to fill the pulpit and, and look for leaders for this congregation. We pray for the, the healing and, and wholeness and health of Lynn and Jim. We pray for Mary and Floyd, and for Joanne, and for Bobby and Martha and Kim. And are there any other joys or concerns that you would lift up this morning as we prepare to step before God in prayer? 
Tuesday. Linda Griffith goes she in for surgery. On, or she had it on surgery or she goes Tuesday. in this Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. The prayers for Linda. Um, Aaron, I had a message from Bob Knox. He had been cleared from his melanoma. <laughs> he also had a bout with prostate cancer, but he's through his treatment, but he did ask for prayers. That is prayers for Bob Knox, um, who is through his treatment for melanoma, but still asks for prayers as he continues to, to heal. Let us pray. Yes, Brandy goes in for another infusion tomorrow. So prayers for her and a safe and hopefully not uh, uncomfortable reaction to it. Yeah. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, may our prayers to you be constant. May our prayers for one another be constant. May our prayers reflect and be strengthened by your abiding love for us and our desire to abide in you. And so, as we are one body, united in Jesus Christ, as we are one, sharing in joys and praying for one another in concerns, we practice that abiding unity of this church by praying for one another, by giving thanks for birthdays and anniversaries, and giving thanks for faithful service, and by praying for friends and family and loved ones who are in need of healing, who are in need of comfort, who are bereaved and grieving, and in need of love and hope. Not only do we lift all those names mentioned this morning, but we lift those names that sit in our hearts. Those people, those lives, those relationships that shape us. We ask your presence, O oh God, in all of these places. trusting in the power of your abiding presence to do all manner of things, to provide peace that surpasses understanding, to provide healing, to fill with hope, to call to new purpose, to inspire the disheartened, to comfort the afflicted, to afflict the comfortable, to lead the way to justice, and to stir up within us a love and gratitude so deep that it frees our lives from the ways of this world and shows us a new way. Each of these names, each of these beautiful people for whom we pray this morning are reminders of your abiding presence with us. Every ounce of love that we share between us, a reminder of your abiding presence in our midst. Give thanks for those places where love makes itself known. May we continue to live our lives in celebration of the victory 
of your love and the coming of your kingdom. We pray for that kingdom using the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, God be with you till we meet again. Let us rise and sing. passage from later in the Gospel of John when Jesus tells his disciples, I no longer call you servants, but friends. Now you have served me in many ways, but I have never, never con considered you to be my servants. So let's just get that off the table right off the bat. <laughs> but what I like about this passage is that it marks a transition in the relationship between Jesus and his disciples. So know that because love abides between us, God's love abides between us. I'm not abandoning you. You're merely becoming my friend. And that is how I will always think of you with gratitude for God, for the ways that we have served together, and the abiding love that will remain in my heart because of the time that I have spent in your midst. May it be the same for you. May God's love abide at Amp Hill Presbyterian Church. May God's ways be celebrated. May the movements of your feet be a dance of joy with the never-ending love of God. Now may you find all the joy, all the beauty that each day has to offer you. And when you find it, please share it to the glory of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love God and to love one another. Shalom. Shalom.